Welcome to Real Life Church Online. Whether you're watching from the comfort of your home or on the go, we are grateful that you have joined us today as part of our online community. We pray that this message will speak to your heart and that you will grow deeper in your relationship with God. As you enjoy this message, we want to extend a warm invitation for you to join us at Real Life in person. There's something truly special when people come together in person to worship God, connect, and grow in Him. If you haven't had the opportunity to join us in person, we'd love to see you here soon. All right, we're going to jump right in. Y'all feel good today? It's a great day to be at church. Eight o'clock was rocking, man. They were laughing, they were amening, they were shouting, they were just having a great time. And um, I'm thankful for that. And I tell you, if you ever feel like you're just a little crowded at this service, just come at 8 a.m. Um, we were, fi- they were, they were filling up all the sections today, pretty good, not quite this full, but it was, it was a great service and um, they just had me pumped up to preach. And I'm excited about this series because it's what you guys asked for. I love preaching things that, that you say, man, I'm hungry to learn this. And the Easter survey was really clear. You guys uh, overwhelmingly said the number one topic you wanted to hear about was how to hear God's voice, how to hear God's voice. So we're going to talk about that over the next couple of weeks. And I'll give you some practical tips on how to hear God's voice. Today, I want to talk a little bit more about how we prepare ourselves to hear God's voice. Not just the, the space and the place and the way, but, but how do I know I'm prepared to hear? Because I think God speaks more often than we realize. I think he speaks more often than we realize. It reminds me of a story, actually. There was an elderly couple. The gentleman, gentleman went to the doctor one day and he, he said, I think my wife is getting hard of hearing. So the doctor gave him this little test to go home and try out on his wife. And so goes home and his wife is cooking dinner and he stands in the living room and says, hey, honey, what's for dinner? And he hears nothing. So he moves over into the doorway of the kitchen and says, hey, honey, what's for dinner? Nothing. So he steps into the kitchen. Honey, what's for dinner? And she's just cooking away. Nothing. Finally, he's a little perturbed. He walks up right behind him and says, honey, what's for dinner? She says, for the fourth time... We're having chicken and noodles. <laughs> Come on, son. listen. I, th- I think God does not have a speaking problem, but we have a hearing problem. We have a hearing problem. So how can we be better prepared to hear? We're going to look at a story that Jesus tells in Luke chapter 8. Jesus' stories are called parables. If you're new to reading the Bible, his stories are called parables. And, um, and then he helps us out and he explains what the parable means. All right? But I want to give you, first of all, right, right in between the parable and the explanation, there's one important verse. I want to start with that. Luke chapter 8, verse 8. Let's read it out loud together. In fact, it's, Jesus says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. If you have ears to hear, let him hear. Okay, how do I get ears to hear? Let's look at this story. Luke 8, verse 5. Jesus says, a farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. Somebody say the path. Okay. It was trampled on and the birds ate it up. And some fell on rocky ground. Somebody say rocky ground. And when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seed fell among what? Among thorns, and which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on, this is the good one, fell on good soil. Come on, I want to be good soil. And it came up and it yielded a crop a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, he who has ears to hear, let him Here. So it's not that God isn't speaking, it's that his words may not be falling onto good soil. It's that his words may not be falling into a prepared heart, ready to hear, ready to receive it. Then in verse 11, he says, This is the meaning of the parable the seed is the word of God. So the word of God is going out. The word of God is being spoken through his word, 
different ways we'll talk about in the coming weeks. The word of God is going out through the preaching of the word. The word is going out through the spirit of God whispering to the hearts of people. The word of God is going out, but is it falling on good soil? There are four different scenarios that we see in this parable. And I believe they represent four different hearts and how those hearts receive God's word, how they hear God's voice. We want to hear God's voice. We want to be prepared to hear it. So let's check our hearts today. Let's look at Jesus's explanation of these four different types of soil. Verse 12, he says, those along the path are the ones who hear, they heard it, but then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and be saved. The word went forward, but it fell on concrete. It fell on the path. It fell on the sidewalk and and the, the soil couldn't even receive it. The heart couldn't even receive it. It was so hard. It was so what I call polluted, a polluted heart. There was junk in there that caused that word to not be received. God's trying to speak, but we got junk in our hearts. And that's not a slam. I'm not trying to rebuke you. Listen, my heart can be polluted just as quickly as any of your hearts can be. Because we're all sinful. We are all flesh. Our hearts can be renewed, but man, the flesh can pull hard. And so that junk can get in there and that pollution comes in two forms. The first is sin. Sin pollutes our hearts. Now, I don't know how popular it is. I don't get to go to many other churches on the weekend. How many of them still preach about sin? But I'm telling you, just because it's 2024 doesn't mean that we don't still have to deal with sin. There's still stuff that, that God does, disapproves of. There's stuff that separates us from God. He, God has a will and a purpose for our life and a way that he's called us to live. And when we live outside of his will and outside of his way, that is sin. When we disobey God's commands to us, that is sin. And sin, sin just means missing the mark. And when we are living a life that is missing the mark, it pollutes our hearts. And it's hard for God's word to get in, to be received. And so James chapter one, verse 21 says, get rid of all filth and evil in your lives. Get rid of it. Get rid of the sin in your life and humbly accept the message. Oh, I want to hear God's voice. I want to receive the message, but I got to get rid of the filth and the sin and the evil first. Because God's trying to plant this message in your hearts, for it is strong enough to save your soul. Wow. God's word is powerful enough to save our soul. But, but do we have pollution that's keeping his word from getting into our hearts? The good news is we can repent of our sin and get rid of the pollution. We hear the word repent and um, it has negative connotation in our world today, right? Like, like, like repent, repent, you know? You better turn or burn, you know? You better get right before you get left. And, 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 and I'm just telling you, repent is not a dirty word. Repent should be one of the most beautiful words in all of scripture. Why? Because scripture says if we repent of our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Wow. What, a, what an incredible opportunity God has given us that when junk gets in our heart, when sin pollutes our heart, if we repent, which doesn't just mean to say we're sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You ever have anybody in your life, they say they're sorry so many times, you don't really think they're sorry, you know? But it means to repent. It means I'm, I'm gonna turn the other direction. I'm turning towards you, Lord. Now, does my flesh pull? Yeah, it always will. Paul had that problem, right? Oh, what a wretch I am. You know, things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I, those are the things that I do. And so flesh pulls, but my heart is turned. It is a repentant heart. I am turning towards you, away from those old things. 
And when we do, he forgives us. He washes us clean. He makes us new. Sin can pollute our hearts. The second thing that can cause pollution in our hearts is people. How many of you know people can do some stuff that leaves some junk in your heart? It wasn't even anything you did. It's something they did. It's like, you know, you go on like family vacation, road trip. You got everybody in the car. Windows rolled up, heat's on, and somebody, somebody makes a pollution. You know what I mean? And now my life is polluted and I didn't even do anything. Pollution is in my heart. And I'm just going to tell you, there's a lot of people who want to try to drop some pollution in your life. They'll they'll talk about you. They'll hurt your feelings. They will let you down. They'll break a promise. They'll talk about you behind your back. They will, uh, you just, you name it. And the devil loves to use those situations. It's not the people, it's the devil to put a root of bitterness in our heart for offense to get in our heart. People walk around offended all the time and that junk is there. And scripture is clear that if we have something against our brother, we have to make that right if we want things between us and him to be right. So some of us may not be hearing God's word because there's sin polluting our heart. Some of us may not be hearing God's word because there's bitterness and offense and unforgiveness polluting our heart. And so we have to deal with the polluted heart. Let's, let's keep reading. The, the next kind of soil here, Jesus Oh, let me, let me give you a little, little one-liner here. We can't begin a new life until we turn from the old. You can write that down. Put that in your blanks. Okay? So we have to turn. We have to repent from the old, polluted life, and begin a new life with Jesus. All right, Luke 8, 13. The rocky soil represents those who hear the message with joy. Ah, I hear it. But like young plants in such soil, their roots don't go very deep. They believe for a while, but they wilt when the hot winds of testing blow, okay? Something comes along and tests that word that has been planted in our heart. Something comes along and competes with the word. This is why you can step out of church on Sunday and think, oh man, that was the best message I've ever heard. Pastor Adam just preached the paint off the walls today. I mean, it was like he was preaching to me. That dude can shuck the corn. I mean, he was absolutely ringing the bell. And it was for me, life-changing word. And all of a sudden, the kids start arguing in the back seat. And the word of God just, whoop, gone. <laughs> right? One coworker the next day, and you completely forget about what God just put in your heart on Sunday, right? One email, one text message, one social media post, it doesn't take much for us to get what is, I'm called the distracted heart. Something else tests that word that was put in my heart. And it distracts me away from what God is trying to say. It's like trying to have a conversation with someone across a busy mall, across a food court. You know what I mean? When it's hopping and buzzing and your spouse or your boyfriend's over there and you know, you know what time, where do you, what do you want to eat? Where are we going? What? I can't hear you. You know, you got the little teriyaki chicken lady trying to get you to eat some free chicken and you got the, you know, Chick-fil-A wafting and you're like, huh? What are you saying? No, there's only one place to eat in this mall, you know? And it's like all the distraction and all the stuff. And it's like people are talking, but you can't, ah. And I think it's that way with us, with God. He's speaking, but we have a hearing problem. And it could be because we have a distracted heart. And can I just tell you one thing that can distract your heart so easily? It's technology. It's your phone. Oh, it's a distraction because it's always buzzing, it's always pulling, there's always an alert, there's always something else to see. And, and listen, can I just confess? They say confession is good for the soul and bad for the reputation. <laughs> but I just got to confess. I, 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 I've loved that I have the Bible app. The Bible app is so good. If you don't have the Bible app, you need to download it. Great tools, great resources, great reading plans. Incredible, incredible. But I know that when I open up my Bible app in the morning to try to read God's word, there are lots of distractions. I think, oh, there may have been an email came in overnight that's something important, and I should maybe pray about it, so I should read and see what's in my email. 
And then I open my email and I see, right? That the Nike store is having a 25% off sale. And uh, <laughs> Lord, I need to pray about this. Do I need a new pair of Nikes right now? You know, like there's just distractions. What happened in the news? Oh, just ch check the news. I mean, something may have happened overnight. The world may have come to an end and I didn't realize it, you know? There's just distraction. YouTube, shorts, social media, just checking. Just check it real fast. Before you know it, 30 minutes has gone by. I've missed my appointment with God because I got to get to work, because I got to get the kids to school, because I got that thing that I need to do. And, and it's created a distracted heart. So in fact, a few months ago, a couple, man, maybe a month ago now, I, I actually bought a paper Bible, a paper Bible. It's smaller than this one. And I just take it with me now everywhere I go. It stays in my bag so that I can, I can do my Bible reading without being distracted because it's so easy to get a distracted heart. So easy to get a distracted heart. And so I believe with all my heart that Satan is working with all of his power to keep us from hearing and receiving God's word. All of hell wants nothing more than for you to be distracted and to keep you from receiving what God is trying to say to you. This is why people can sit through the same church service. And one person's like, oh, that was so powerful today. And the other person's like, we better get to going because the Cracker Barrel is about to be filling up because Baptist church is going to be done by 11. You know, we've got to go. <laughs> Distraction. And so to hear God's voice, I must turn down the world's volume. Turn it down. In fact, that's something for you to pray about. Is there an area of my life that I need to turn the volume down on so that I can hear God's voice better? You got the polluted heart. You've got a distracted heart. And let's keep reading. Verse 14, Jesus says, the seed that fell among the weeds stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they don't what? They don't mature. They don't mature. Oh, so in other words, I can receive the word of God, but the worries and the pleasures and the riches and all the stuff that the world offers, it can choke out God's word because my immaturity keeps me from growing because the weeds choked it out. I got distracted by things that were temporal instead of being focused on things that are eternal. You ever try to grow weeds? Anybody ever try to do that? You know, you know why you don't have to try to grow weeds? Because weeds grow themselves, right? I remember when Kristen and I first got married, we were blessed to move into to a house and, and, uh, uh, and the, the, you know, beautiful neighborhood. And all of a sudden that first spring comes along and and like weeds are popping up in the yard. And I'm like, man, what do I do now? I just need to lower the lawnmower blade is what I need to do and just whack those things down and keep them real low, you know, so that they don't grow. But guess what? They keep growing. They keep growing. And, and before I knew it, I realized um, my yard does not look like everybody else's yard. There's something I got to do. Well, there was an old man who lived across the street. And so I would just watch him. What's he doing today? Oh, he's spraying something on the yard. What are you spraying on the yard? Oh, this is, you know, dandelion killer. Oh, man, I thought those were flowers. I'm supposed to do something about that. Okay, so let me get some, let me go buy some dandelion. Hey, what are you doing today? Oh, I'm putting down some fertilizer. Oh, you're fertilizing. Hey, how come your grass is mowed like this and my grass is growing like that? He said, well, you mow it like that, it's going to burn it all up. You got to grow it. And all of a sudden, an immature newlywed sees somebody mature and says, I, I don't want to stay immature. I don't want to be the immature newlywed on the block with dandelions and weeds and nastiness growing in my yard. I want my yard to look like this mature guy across the street, right? And I believe that that is, applies to us. The third heart is the immature heart. What causes weeds to grow up in a yard? Neglect. Neglect. I'm saved. I even got baptized. But I'm, but I'm fine with where I'm at right now. And God's saying, I'm trying to call you deeper. I have something more for you, but, but, but I don't really want to do that work. I don't want to have to spray that weed stuff. I don't want to have to spend the money on fertilizer. 
I don't want to take the time for that. I'd rather go hang out. I'd rather be with my friends. I'd rather do that than actually have to do some yard work. Sounds immature, doesn't it? Sounds immature to neglect and God say, no, 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 no. I want to do more in your life. And I want to, I don't want you to stay a baby in your faith because the, the worries and the pleasures and the riches of life will choke out God's word. If you're so immature that we are focused on the temporal things, God say, no, 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 I have eternal things. I want to talk, I want to talk to you like a big boy. Um, we'll be in like a team meeting. And we kind of have this team meeting that like if, if a family member calls during a team meeting and you need to take that, you take that. So every once in a while I'll be in a team meeting, you know, and we'll be talking about, oh yes, we have this strategy and lots of whiteboard this and we've been praying about that and I believe God's saying this about this and very deep, mature things. And then, and then like Pastor Shauna's phone will ring and, and her youngest girl will, will be on the other line. And your pastor will say, Pastor Adam, I think that we should, oh, hang on a second. Yes. Hi, Nora. How are you? Yeah, mommy's in the meeting right now. Uh Uh-huh, yeah, I'll come home later. It'll be real soon. It'll be real soon. Okay, I love you. Okay, bye-bye. And Pastor Adam, I think the other thing that uh, we should be doing, you know, you know what I mean? And I wonder if sometimes God is in heaven and he's saying, I'm tired of talking to you like a baby. Come on, you can go to church today. Yes, you can. I know it's early. It's not too early though. You can go to the second service. Yes, you can. I know. You want to read the Bible? You can read the Bible. You don't have to read a whole chapter. No, 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 no. Just one little verse of the day. That's it. You can do that. Yes, you, you should join a small group. You should join a small. Oh yes, you can do a small group. I believe in you. I believe in you. You can do it. God's going to come on. You've been serving me for three years. You've been serving me for eight years. You've been serving me for 15 years. And we're having the same baby talk. I'm trying to call you to maturity. I'm trying to call you to growth. I'm trying to call you to something more. I have more for you than what you're experiencing. But you're allowing the riches and the pleasures of life and the, all the things, right? I go there and do that. I want to go have that vacation. I, if I could just earn enough to move into that house and I got to get on the right travel team and, and I want to get into the right college and just find me the right man. Like I got all these things. Are they bad? No, but, they, but God's saying, I have something that's more important, more valuable. I want you to grow. Listen, you want to take a growth step? Jump into a small group. You'll grow with other people because now you're interacting. People who are ahead of you, people who are behind you, interacting with God's word. Our summer semester begins June 1st, June 1st, June 1st through the 13th. I said, well, well, I'm gonna be traveling. I'm gonna do it. Well, get in a group and be there when you can. And just say, I'm gonna take the step. Some of you wanna talk about maturing. God may be asking you to lead a group. You've been in a group for a long time and God's saying, listen, I'm calling you to mature. I'm calling you to invest in the life of somebody else. I'm calling you to be the old man across the street. Say, let me show you how to spray your weeds. You don't have to have it all figured out. You don't have to have all the answers. You know what? You get in a small group and you're the leader and somebody asks a question you don't know the answer to. You say, that's a great question. We're going to get the answer for you. And then you Call Pastor Caleb. Pastor Caleb, what's the answer to this question, right? But we're, we're moving in towards maturity in Christ. And maturity comes when we stop making excuses and we start making changes. Stop making, there will always be a reason why you can't lead a group. There will always be a reason why it's not a good Sunday to start growth track. There will always be a reason why you feel like you can't serve in real life kids. There will always be a reason why you don't think that now's the right time to share your faith with somebody. There will always be a reason for you to not open up your Bible. There will always be a reason to do something else instead of spend time in prayer. And God's saying, stop making excuses. I'm, I'm, I'm calling you to maturity. He's wanting to speak. He's wanting to speak, but is our heart ready to listen? Could be a polluted heart. Could be a distracted heart. Could be an immature heart. And finally, verse 15, Jesus says, but the seed on good soil. Oh, that's what I want to be, good soil. It stands for those with a noble and a good heart. Ah, I didn't even have to ask you to show a hand. Who would rather have a good heart? Than an evil heart. Oh man, of course I want a good heart. Of 
course I want to have a good heart. What's, what happens with a good heart? They hear the word, they retain it, and by persevering, they produce a crop. A good heart hears the word, retains it, and obeys it. And when they obey the word of the Lord, what happens? A crop is produced. A crop is produced. They begin to make a difference. This is, this is what I call the prepared heart. The prepared heart. Once you deal with the pollution, once you acknowledge the distractions, turn the volume down. Once you deal with some immaturity and say, okay, Lord, help my mind to be fixed on things above, not just things of earth. Now my heart is ready to receive your word. And so as you speak to me, let me hear it, let me retain it, and I want to obey it so that I can produce a crop. Listen, one word from God can produce a hundredfold for the kingdom when it's obeyed, when it's heard, when it's received, and when it's obeyed. Who knows what kingdom impact God may have inside of you? But are you in a place where you can hear? Are you in a place where you can receive? Is your heart ready to obey? I, I wanna wrap up with this kind of cool picture because if you've been around real life for any time at all, you know we believe that every person is on a spiritual journey to know God, find freedom, discover their purpose, and make a difference. It's a journey. Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, make a difference. Know God. Find freedom from your past. You can know God and have junk and baggage. Discover your purpose, your real way to live, why God created you in your mother's, why he formed you in your mother's womb. He had a good work for you planned in advance to make a difference for eternity. I believe we see that spiritual journey in this parable. I believe we see it. Why? What's the first kind of heart? A polluted heart. How do you deal with a polluted heart? You have to know God. Man, when I come to know God, he forgives me of my sin. He gives me a new heart. Scripture says he takes your heart of stone and he gives you a heart of flesh. Yes. What's the second step in the journey? Find freedom. What's the second kind of heart? A distracted heart. Man, distracted by sin, past, guilt, shame, distracted by the noise of what other people have done to me can get in my heart, get in my crawl. I got to deal with, I got to find freedom from that stuff. Third heart is an immature heart. How do we deal with that? We got to discover our purpose. What's the immature person do? I want to run. I want to play. I want to do all the fun things. I want to have all the stuff. I want to do all the things the world offers. And God's saying, listen, you can go do all that stuff and you'll still go to bed at night and put your head on the pillow and you'll think there's got to be more to life than this. Got to be more to life than another pair of shoes. Got to be more to life than making an extra digit on my paycheck. Got to be more to life than taking a bigger and better vacation. It's because there is. It's got a purpose for you. When you discover it, then you have a prepared heart. And what's a prepared heart do? A prepared heart makes a difference, doesn't it? A prepared heart produces a crop. It receives the word, retains it, and obeys it. And it makes a difference. It makes a difference. And this is a cycle of life. It's not a place of arrival. That's it. Now I make a difference. Because guess what? You can always know God more today than you did yesterday. And as long as you're on this earth, there's going to be new junk and baggage that gets attached to your life <laughs> that you got to find freedom from. And as you go through different phases of life, God will have a different purpose for you. Your purpose looks different when you're a teenager than it does when you're a mom or a dad. Your purpose looks different as a newlywed than it does as an empty nester. Your purpose looks different in different seasons of life. And we can always be looking to make a difference. That's the ultimate goal for every single one of us. It's what God wants for our lives. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? And I wanna just wrap up with this thought. God is speaking. Are we listening? Are our hearts prepared to hear? Can I tell you, God's voice is clearest in a prepared environment. 
God's voice is clearest in a prepared environment. You can't grow bananas in Alaska. Is your environment prepared? Next week, we're gonna talk about ways and places and how, some practical steps to hear God's voice. Today, I want you to prepare your heart. So if you're a follower of Jesus in this room, will you right now just ask, Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? Is there pollution in my heart I need to repent from? Is there somebody I need to forgive? Have I been distracted by other things testing my life? Do I need to turn the volume down on something so that I can hear your voice? Is there an area that I have been immature? That I've been caught up in temporary things instead of focused on eternal things. And then pray, God, make my heart good soil so that I can hear your word, so that I can receive it and obey it. I don't wanna just be a hearer of the word, I wanna be a doer of the word. All the followers of Jesus, you're just making that your prayer right now, listening for the voice of the Lord. Maybe you are here this morning and you are not a follower of Jesus. Maybe you're watching the service right now and you are far from God. Maybe you have allowed sin to pollute your heart. And and through this service, you're aware that you are separated from God because of your actions, your behavior, your heart is, is polluted. Maybe you've tried many other things in life to find purpose and meaning and hope and joy. And you are that person who, when you lay your head on your pillow at night, you know something is missing. Can I tell you, your heart was created to be filled with the love of your creator, to experience a real relationship with God. And that's what your heart's longing for. Maybe you feel that tug right now. It's God, he's drawing you to himself. And can I tell you, It doesn't matter where you've been or what you've done. Jesus, when he died on the cross, he came as the son of God, lived a perfect life so that you and I don't have to be perfect. And when he died on the cross, he paid the price for the sins of the world, yours and mine, so that we could receive forgiveness. And three days later, he rose from the dead and he conquered death so that after this life is over, we can experience eternal life in heaven with him. If you're here today and you'd say, Adam, I'm far from God, but I want to take that first step in the spiritual journey and I want to know him. I don't wanna just know about him, I wanna know him for myself. If that's you, I won't put you on the spot. I just want to see who I'm praying with. Will you just lift your hand so that I can see it when I count to three? One, two, three. Yeah, man. Awesome. Best decision you can make. Yes, ma'am. Praise God. Yes, sir. Best decision you could ever make. Proud of you. If that's you, just slip it up so that I can see. If you're watching church online, you can click the button right below me and say, today, I'm making that decision to follow Jesus. You can put your hands down all around the room. And I'm gonna ask everybody, can we pray this prayer together as an encouragement to those who are responding? It's not a prayer of perfection. It's just a prayer of surrender. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you for this chance to open up my heart to you. I've lived my way. There's sin in my life and it's separating me from you but I believe you died for my sin so that I can be forgiven. Come into my heart, wash me clean, make me new on the inside. From this day forward, my life is yours. I'm putting you in charge. I surrender everything to you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Church, come on. Can we celebrate together new life in Christ? Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Thank you so much for spending this time with us through our online message. We pray this message encourages your walk with Jesus, and we want to invite you again to worship with us in person at our Greenfield, Indiana location. We believe God desires for you to know Him, 
Be set free and discover the purpose he has for you and make a difference in the lives of those around you. If you would like more information about service times, events, and ministries at Real Life Church, you can connect with us on our website or download the Real Life app through Apple and Google Play.